Hey, it's Jojo, Joanne, and Krisha here from New York and from Miami, ready to hear and ready to share our trails, perils, and decades of experiences, connections with you. While we ensemble interview authors, athletes, comedians, entrepreneurs, experts, leaders, and successful nuts we've curated over the years, join us on Apple, Google Play, iHeartRadio, LinkedIn, YouTube, and wherever you listen. Follow us on our socials. Most of the time, it's at our names for now, found in the comments section of all the social media posts and the YouTube post out there. Krisha? Thanks, Jojo. So today, our hosts, we are so excited to announce, uh, we have super agent at Keller Williams Miami Beach and CEO of Lux Life Charters, LLC. She will charter you in a yacht to waterfront mansion, Joanne Policalvo. Uh, we have me <laughs> to the point. I have my podcast as well to the point with Christian and Michael and I'm the executive director at Harvard and tech. You can always count on me uh, to tell it to you straight and nothing but that. So my name is Krisha Lenzo. Lovely to meet you all. And we have Jojo Pastors. She's head of client relations at Barron's and Financial Times, top power planners and managers at Pioneer Financial at Northwestern. And she will get you to prosperity and the promised land tax-free is Jojo Pastors. So this is happening now with Jojo, Joanne, and Krisha. Welcome everyone. Great, thank you. So excited Thanks. to be here today. We are, um, you know, we, we've got a lot of topics on the table. There's, um, everything is happening very fast, but I think today we're gonna tackle the state of, biz, of fitness. Um, you know, the state of fitness has, changed and evolved so much, not just throughout this pandemic in the last year, but, you know, I think we've seen decades of how um, fitness just has gone from, you know, doing some calisthenics in your, in your high school gym to really being the, the, the forefront and the pushing factor of a lot of people's lives, right? I mean, fitness is something that a lot of people have in their life or they want to place in their life. And um, right now, I think, one of the things the pandemic really did was kind of turn that gym dynamic around, right? And bring it to your home live and in person, whether it was streaming or on demand, you can, you could basically get your workout in. And um, I don't know about you guys, but I, I found a little bit of a solace to, you know, being at home and being able to, to just do it when I wanted to. Right. Jojo. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, we, uh, we did not order our bike early on. Um, <laughs> we ordered it early enough on so that it could come around. It came around uh, in the December, January timeframe. So yeah, we thought we would get one at some point and it would be maybe for rainy days in the winter time. Right. Um, but it ended up, you know, uh, ended up being a lot from a lot more than that, you know. And you know, pop, well, if we're if we're mentioning in those bike scenes, you know, of you getting waiting and the waiting of getting your your equipment to come home, we've seen the ups and downs of those stocks as well, right? So you yeah. you've seen how that how the fitness environment has taken up a, a hit for things like club sports, which were all the New York um, sports clubs and and Boston sports clubs. Uh, to to the pelotons of the world that are you know the rising stars. So it's it's really interesting, Prisha. What 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 has your take been kind of during this whole pandemic on on fitness? You know, I have always tried to keep up with the latest fitness trends, um, whether it's through Instagram, looking at different inf influencers posting on their stories what they were up to. But I would agree. I mean, everything is at home now, especially during the pandemic. Everyone's learned to iterate to make it work for them. And that's the beauty of it actually too. And in some ways I find myself working out more than ever. <laughs> yeah. Because you realize yeah. that actually you don't have that's to go to the gym. You could do like a quick little 10 minute, you know, ab workout and maybe Absolutely. that's how you get in, but yeah. that's, you know, it's good. Right. I mean, no, she makes a great point. I found myself really early on in the pandemic. Um, cause that's what we had to do. Right. Nothing was open. We couldn't right. see each other. Um, and so it was a bike ride in the morning at 6 a.m. And then, well, I'm gonna take another break at 7 p.m. at night and see the sunset. You know, that was just what you did because our things to do 
uh, Rousseau, we didn't have, a, it wasn't a long list of options. And, you know, and on, on that evolution, um, here, here, at least in Miami, you know, we earlier on than other places, we were able to open the tennis clubs and the golf clubs, um, of course, because we were outdoors, right? And, and it's really hard. I know we all know it's really hard to play tennis or, or any kind of sport with a mask on or go to the gym with a mask on. It's a little suffocating even more so in August in, in Miami. But, um, you know, everybody kind of took a, a hit and, and hopefully we're going to see some kind of a comeback, especially for a lot of kids sports, right? You know, especially when, when they need that more than ever. Um, lifetime fitness clubs, those are big deals during the pandemic. I know people that are in construction in Chicago actually building some of those that are that are going to be open now um, with a with a hope of bringing the people through the door and um, you know the evolution of that as well of the gym which is just another amazing thing but yeah I think that this is a good way to get people that never never could go to a gym or never wanted to because of whatever reason to really get into that fitness wave and and do it what they can to stay healthy so yeah get get outside, get in their home. And now that, you know, some of the gyms are coming back or, you know, some of the companies, it's new companies, some uh, companies went out of business. Yeah. Any, there's a few gym franchises that, that went out of business. Um, they were going to, they were really slowing down and then this pandemic just, just made it happen. So, but speaking of working out outside, which is everybody's preferred, takes us to our guest today. Um, at the age of 15, he moved from South Africa to Texas to compete on a college scholarship with the John Newcomb Tennis Academy and Texas Christian University. While at TCU, he reached the NCAA finals while earning All-American honors, was ranked number one, not number two, not number three, number one college player in the U.S., went on to become a top 50 and top 100 player in the ATP Tour where he played in all four Grand Slams, traveled to 38 countries playing the sport he loves, Everybody on this podcast loves this sport. He was a champion or finalist in a lot of many that you've heard, Cincinnati, U.S. Open, USTA, ATP, and the NCAA. How some have described him through the years. His inspirational approach to the game is hard to match. Nice. He is well-known and well-loved in the professional tennis world. It is admirable how he listens and how he is capable of making every person on a tennis court feel amazing, and he is an exceptional at bringing out the best in others. That's why he's here today. Uh, we saw that early on. That's why he has his job. Jason is one of those rare persons who has that inexplicable it factor. I love that. When it comes to his tennis leadership and coaching, he exudes an infectious, prideful energy and presence both on and off the court that motivates and excites tennis players and opponents alike. Two fantastic children, Isabella 13, John 10, with their mom in Joburg, South Africa. Beautiful wife, Robin, here in New York City. Please welcome to the show, Jason Weir Smith. <laughs> guys i really want to appreciate um this this opportunity thank you for putting this together and and hosting me um yeah it's an absolute uh, privilege um i love what you guys are doing and, and achieving and um hats off to you so but um but yeah i think my comments and listening to your opening remarks um fitness and um activities outside in the last 18 months have have really taken on a different form and i personally from a from a tennis perspective obviously i've got a little bit of a bias because I'm, I'm i'm nuts about tennis and and um really uh, at the previous club where i was in utah we were at a point and you talk about businesses recovering there was a period of time where where it was touch and go whether this business and this club would open up again but tennis soared and absolutely anybody and everybody wanted to play tennis, which, um, which was what we saw throughout the country and throughout the US and globally too. So, so um, the sport itself saw incredible numbers, especially beginners, people that had never played tennis before. Um, they wanted to be outside, they wanted to exercise, and obviously it ticked the boxes of socially distancing and, and all the rest. So, so over the last 18 months, tennis has, has seen a boom um, and everything associated with is, is as well. So, so it's been a, it's been an incredible journey. I saw that club go from strength to strength very quickly. Um, obviously changed uh, positions and, and took on this position here at the Westside Tennis Club in New York. 
and and the same thing this summer the courts have been packed um events are are still um you know cautious uh, because of gatherings but as far as tennis players and activity on the court um we're seeing massive numbers so so from my personal experience um you know it's been a it's been a curve of of learning and and adjusting to the to the environment that uh, that's been thrown at us and that's you know you talk about business successes it's um it's uh for me there's a saying that uh, one of my my previous bosses said was it's not the big that eat the small anymore it's the fast that eat the slow and uh, and i think that that adaptability in business 100%, 100%. Is, is so key in in this day and age you see these little companies explode because of their ability to to adapt and this this uh, pandemic has shown just that and there's just so many examples of businesses that are succeeding in in this trying time so those are some of my comments and again thank you for having me on here yeah absolutely and you're you're so accurate you're so spot on on point with that it's about being nimble and about being resilient and it's it's been about that 100 years ago and it's exactly the same way today and uh this pandemic was just so um, you know, it caught, it caught the best and the brightest. It, it's, you know, it shook everybody up. It stopped everybody in their tracks. So um, definitely, I, I see what you're saying on the nimble and resiliency, right? One of the other comments was uh, you guys mentioned fitness and kids. And I think, yeah, um, I thought of you. Yeah. Especially yeah. in the tennis environment we've seen. Um, so for those of you that don't know, there are, there are introductory levels to, 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 um, kids tennis, uh, red ball, orange ball, and green ball, we call it ROG, but um, especially in the red ball zone or the red ball um, age groups from sort of four or five years old up to about seven, eight years old, we're seeing excessive numbers, um, um, 20, 30, 50 kids signing up for a, for a program. And so that's very encouraging. And I think uh, um, I'm elated to, to, to see that and experience that. And, and, it's, and it's pushing into the fall now where parents are saying instead of a an indoor activity not not that there's anything bad with that activity but it's indoors it's it's restricting their their options so the tennis industry as a whole is seeing a a, a very big boost so yeah pleased to announce that so south africa texas utah new york number one college player a whole bunch of things happened between then and now head of racket sports out in utah west side tennis club you've got the wimbledon grass seed now right at your, where you work, Westside Tennis Club, former host to US Open Grand Slam tournament up until 1978 for 60 years until it moved to where it's at right now at the National Tennis Center out in Flushing Meadows. Yes. You're, you're at a venue, not only historic for tennis, but for music, 14,000 seat, Forest Hill Stadium, uh, the Rolling Stones, the Beatles, uh, Paul Simon, Simon and Garfunkel, Bob Dylan, and now new new legends are there. Greta Van Fleet, we just saw that show before everything. So it's a historic tennis, historic music, one of New York's top venues, one of America's most intimate venues and festival settings. I love it as a, as a music and concert. My concert favorite. Goer. Yeah. One of my favorites. So tell us about your journey to today, and then tell us about today. How excited were you when you got this opportunity today? You mentioned entrepreneurs and uh, business earlier uh, when we spoke, and and I think in my blood is entrepreneurship. My father has been involved in several businesses, and I saw that growing up, and I think that's always been instilled in me. Um, so when this opportunity came about, um, I knew that there would be very very strong candidates. Um, I'm talking about the West Side Tennis Club, um, and it wasn't just about the tennis and the history and the U.S. Open and, and opportunity in that sphere, but it was the other business aspects that you that you talk about, the, 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 the synergy with the concert and the production team that we have here um, and all the business decisions that we've got to make there, um, the events that we're putting on. So um, we, we have managed to um, secure and host a Davis Cup tie here at South Africa versus Venezuela. That's happening in September. Very um, cool. You know, Very we, cool. We have in the past hosted many national events, so it's it's a combination of that um, that has really um, excited me about about being involved because um, I still love teaching. You know that four or five year old on the court as well as the the eighty year old, um, as well as the groups. But there's something about combining the two, the tennis and the tennis business, and and now in this very very special environment, 
um, concerts. Um, so, so yeah, it's, it's almost ticking every box. You know, it's, it, I feel sometimes like I'm juggling 28 balls at the same time, but mm. that's what happens and that's what business is all about. And it's exciting. Yeah. So yeah, there are very, very big things happening here at Westside. Well, since you mentioned juggling a lot of balls, um, Jason, in terms of, uh, you know, having a lot in the air, a lot of these athletes right now, there's been, you know, the topic of mental health being brought up and what that entails. Um, so Billie Jean King, who we all love and admire, you know, she came out saying pressure is a privilege. What are your thoughts on this statement, given the current backdrop of a lot of the mental health situation that we're seeing, you know, with players like Naomi Osaka and the like, what's your yes. Yeah, I think it's a sensitive topic and I think it's a, it's a challenging one and one we need to delve into. I can only comment on my own personal experience and how I've dealt with pressure. I think at the time you, you feel um, like you're drowning and, and you can't cope. Um, but I think, you know, when I look back at the, the situations where I was able to handle it and, um, and, basically learn from it. Um, I think for me, I agree with Billie Jean that it is a privilege. You know, we, we, we often dream about playing in front of a massive audience or being on a stage and performing or um, doing that massive presentation for that big deal that you're going to do. And, and, and yes, everybody feels nervousness or, or, or a sense of pressure at some time, but, but it is a privilege. You worked hard to get there. You worked hard to get to the qualifying of the event or the main draw or the finals of this, this tournament. And so I think um, that is something that, um, yeah, the true great players are, or, or, or performers or um, achievers are able to channel that nervous energy and that, that, um, that emotional uh, aspect to it and, and, and still achieve. Now, as far as the, the pressure from media and outside sources, um, you know, as far as you're talking about Naomi or, or Biles or any of those um, top athletes, I can't comment directly. I, I, don't, I don't know what they felt and what they dealt with personally. But all I can say is from my personal perspective, it was always a privilege to be in those arenas, whether it was at the NCAAs, um, even national events or, or, or the Grand Slams. Um, and so looking back, I, I wouldn't pass it up for anything in the world. Um, there's not many people that can say they, they experienced that. Um, and so even though I was nervous and, and um, I'll, I'll give an example of, of one time where I was able to channel that energy. I was with my coach. We were about to play the number one team in the world. It was Jonas Bjorkman and Todd Woodbridge. This wow. was at the Miami tournament, actually, Joe, wow. Joe, uh, or Joanne, it was at the Miami tournament, actually. And, um, and he said, well, what's, what's going on with you right now? And I just said, I'm, I'm in my own space. I'm just in my own thoughts. I was warming up and I was hitting the ball as clean as I've, I've ever hit it. But I, was, I had a clear mind and I, and I was just embracing the moment. And it seems so cliche and so, uh, you know, but it was simple. It, I just kept it simple and tried to enjoy that particular moment because I felt like it was, I mean, that, it, that was everything I'd worked towards, you know, um, in my career. So... So, yeah, I hope that sheds some light on, on what and, I feel about it. And, that, and I think that's exactly what, not just athletes, but I think all of us, we miss living in that moment, right? We miss that with, with so many things in life. Um, that, that's great, Jason. Thank you. So we're going to take just a quick break to uh, talk about our sponsors real quick. So this is happening now. This happening now is brought to you by Boat Hotline. It's Miami's premier yacht and boat rental platform. You can visit us today at www.boathotline.com. Miami is waiting for you. Boat Hotline is a registered trademark. And are you looking to relocate, upgrade, or scale down? I am here to help you find your dream home. Find me at jpolycalvo.kw.com to start your search today. Each office of Keller Williams is independently owned and operated. Jojo, am I? Oh. All right, I'll, I'll do my own or you want to do yours? I can, you I'll, I'll do it for you, sorry. Yeah, that's all right. Get Pioneer in Financial at Northwestern Mutual. Jojo and the team know the questions to ask you about life's transitions, what to anticipate, and the potential issues that you need to plan for when developing and executing on your financial plan design. 
to adapt it all to in, and evolve into your needs. They look forward to putting together a pa the passion that they have over 75 years of collective experience at Pioneer Financial Northwestern Mutual. Contact Jojo and visit her team at pioneerfinancial.nm.com. The West Side Tennis Club. We're gonna do a little plug for you real quick. So oh, fantastic, has, thank you. Yeah, <laughs> has, has 40 tennis courts on five surfaces, grass, clay, hard to deco turf, and synthetic black, uh, grass. So whether you're a beginner, you're intermediate, or you're just a recreational weekend warrior, right? They have everything that you need, matches, clinics, camps, to help you get started. They are one of the finest private tennis clubs in the area and possibly in the country. Well, we'll have to check it out. <laughs> yeah, and, and for, there was a lot of details there. So all the comments, yeah. all the comments section on social media. On the, on the comments, yep. Right. They can find contact all of the details. And contact us. So um, back at it, Jason, back at it. Uh, Christine, uh, back in. Yeah. So Jason, back at it with you. Um, yes. Why don't you talk a little bit about some of your tips um, for those who are trying to get back into the sport of tennis this summer? I mean, summer, we still have a few weeks left. Any books or guides that you recommend for those of us who are trying to pretend like we're in U.S. Open shape? <laughs> sure. um, I think... I think um, tennis uh, for a first timer, and I've never really realized this until more recently, but um, it's a little bit intimidating. I'd like to say that um, it certainly is not. And I think um, there's, that, there's that hesitation by people to say, oh, it looks really difficult or, or maybe they start and it is a very difficult uh, sport to get started. But we've got a, a program called the Never Ever Tennis Clinic. Um, and it just teaches about the, the basics, the tennis etiquette, because there's things that I think people are, they're afraid, you know, they're not sure what to, uh, what to do, where to stand, what to expect. And so my, my feeling is just embrace it and, and just um, take the first steps. Um, you know, first of all, uh, the USPTA and, and um, their certification process is, is phenomenal. And, and the reason I say that is because I really think they, that you should look for a, a certified professional. Um, you know, um, like any industry, and Jojo, you can attest, you need to be certified, you need to be um, uh, yep. tested um, and all that Absolutely. stuff. And so um, the tennis industry has the USPTA, which, which I'm, a, I'm a member of and, and proud supporter of. Um, but really, I think look for your local pro. Um, if you're not a member of a club um, that has tennis, inquire with, with the local pro and they'll, they'll definitely point you in the right direction. So, um, but as far as, yeah, just take the steps. You know, you don't need a racket. You don't need balls. Um, those pros and, and that network will, will guide you and, and point you in the right direction. And worst case scenario, just reach out to me. I'll, I'll get you going. <laughs> Great. So... U.S. Open is coming up, Jason. Um, who just, we're going to put you on the spot. Who do you think might, might be in the finals here in the women's and the, and the men's looking at, at, the, at who's coming in? So, um, look, on the, on the men's side, I think, you know, the guy, that, the guy to beat right now is, is Djokovic. Um, he's just, you know, he's such a phenomenal, consistent performer, um, works exceptionally hard in every aspect of his game. And, and I think he's going to be really tough to beat, um, uh, given the given what's happened and, and, and what's going on. Um, I think there's some movers. Um, I mean, obviously you can never count out Nadal, Medvedev. I mean, I'm a I'm a Federer fan. You know, he's he's um, he's been at the game for so many years, and right. and I think um, uh, you know those top three: Nadal, Federer, and, and, and Djokovic. I'd love to see that one of them win it and, and become the 21st Grand Slam winner. Um, you know, a small part of me wants Djokovic to, to be that, um, uh, me too. Me too. win the grand slams, all four of them this year, but, but essentially, um, you know, there's a, there's a lot of good competitors out there. I think the future is with two players, uh, Tsitsipas and Sinner. I think they're young, up and coming, strong, mm -hmm. athletic, um, talented players. Um, and so, so yeah, that, that's on the men's side, on the women's side, I feel Man, it would be so awesome, Serena, you know, to see her break some records and, and come back. And she's just just a phenomenal athlete that yeah. I have yeah. the utmost respect for. 
Um, yeah, I think Osaka is another one of my favorites. Um, I don't think she hasn't hasn't had her best summer, but um, Barty, yeah, uh, that, that's my money for the women's. It's Barty, okay. and uh, yeah, she's doing but, pretty well these days. Barty's yeah, still, yeah, but that's yeah. that. Uh, yeah, uh, it's a little bit more open on the women's side. I think yeah. there's probably several players that could come through. Mm-hmm. Um, and I have a few coaches that have that have asked for, for their players to come and train here on the hard courts and stuff like that. But, um, yeah, it'll be interesting. Um, it'll be interesting either way. But, uh, but yeah. That, that's great. So we're going to do a quick uh, an eat, pray, love. We have a, a rapid fire round. Uh, really, you know, if you want to give us some – most interesting place you've ever traveled to? Wow, um, Umar, Croatia, oh. and um, there was a tournament there, beautiful, but it was just um, p- picturesque, right on the coast. The people were great, seafood, the food was phenomenal, um, and definitely, um, I-, I went to a couple of places, Zagreb, Split, and Umar, and certainly I want to go back one day and do do it more in a uh, vacation style because I was more nice. on the tennis, but that, that you, was gotta, you have to do a yacht. They say it, yacht exactly. on, on in Croatia for sure. More um, Croatia. Mo- Joanne jo- will sell one over. Across yeah, the fuck it up. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. So, favorite meal for you pre tournament? Pre tournament, I mean, it's 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 carbs. You know, I uh, I'm a big Italian fan and I nice. love a spicy arrabbiata. Um, throw some, nice. throw some, uh, you know. Throw some um, shrimp on there. Um, so that, that, that's probably my go-to. It's a pretty simple meal, but a little bit of spiciness to it. Awesome. And that segs me, my segue into a uh, favorite tournament. Oh, that's a tough one. Um, mm. We thought but, it might be. That's yeah. why we yeah. <laughs> You know, it's, so, it's always associated with a tournament you do the best in or, the, you know, that sure. have the best results yeah. um, because you tend to stay there the longest. Kitzbühel, Austria, um, had a phenomenal tournament there that I played several times, and I, I guess that would be my my tour event. But if I if I had to say on the Slam side, the U.S. Open is just it's incredible. Um, it's it's got an electricity about it. Um, I I, pl- I was very fortunate to play it four times and 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 loved it. Um, absolutely, you know, I had a great time. So so yeah, th- those would be my best tournaments. Amazing. And uh, I'll leave you with a, a one that's even maybe a little harder. If okay. you could have any three people dead or alive at your dinner table, who might they be? Nelson Mandela. Okay. Um, yeah. So obviously, oh uh, yeah, just an iconic, incredible human um, that left the world a better place. And uh, yeah, I mean, that would be um, an amazing discussion with him. Um I think, I mean, obviously it's more uh, present for me. It's uh, Stan Smith um, and only because he's a, a guest of mine next week. Um, and I'm, I'm very, very excited to spend some time with him, but also he's and a well, tennis two of great. us are going to be out there. Christian and I are going to be out there with you for that. So oh, cool. Be- All right. Fantastic. You there. Cool. <laughs> and uh, so, so that, that would be the other guy because really from a tennis perspective, um you know he's he's been there he's done that he's he's, he's done done so much and, and been involved right. in, in in the sport um he's got his own shoes right oh exactly. i know <laughs> has everybody got their pair of shoes he's the, he was the original you know yeah. air jordan yeah that's right. right exactly exactly and then this is a this is a tough one i don't get to see my kids often so they count as one because they're two but um, that's great. my daughter my, my son live in south africa and this last 18 months has been very very difficult there's been two windows yeah. that i managed to shoot over to south africa for two weeks yeah. and then came back and the country virtually went in lockdown again so i was very fortunate but they would definitely be two people that that i'd want that's great you will we'll give you extras for that absolutely <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah they count as one. i think i think jojo has another question for you sure. we have a couple that came in from the audience matt in pittsburgh wants to know what your go-to racket is and baker and rehoboth wants to know what do you think in new york city um, before and now. So those are your last two go-to racket. And, uh, what do you think in New sure. York city? Sure. Um, so my go-to racket, I'm a, I'm a Wilson guy. I've been with the blade for about two years now. I mean, it's, it's, it serves me well, but, um, that's my go-to racket. 
as far as New York, I, I experienced New York as a, as a tourist and visitor for short periods of time, you know, during the open and other tournaments and in and out. And it was just such a cool city and amazing city to visit. But now that I live here, it just is exposed a, a completely different um, uh, uh, side to it. Um, yeah. Just so much more to it, so much color yeah. and culture and people and food. And uh, my wife and I are just loving it. You know, I think the yeah. ease of travel, if travel was normal, of course, right? Um, yeah. But also the access to to local places. I mean, just down the road, Philadelphia, Newport. We took a drive up to you know um, Rhode Island and uh, yeah. further up to Maine a couple of weeks ago. So I've never okay. been upstate New York, but I think just the diversity and and color and everything that that it has to offer. You know, personally, yeah. I'm experiencing Forest Hills, which is a, a little oasis. You know, it doesn't feel like mm -hmm. I'm in New York. Right. But in 20 minutes, I'm I'm in the city and having an amazing meal with friends. So, so that's what that's some of the things I love about New York. And then obviously, it's direct flights to pretty much anywhere. That's right. That's right. And Forest Hills is so pristine and so manicured. It's just so you you get out of you get out of the city when when yeah. you're on um, when you're on the greens and out there. Uh, Joanne, next trip up, you're going to have to definitely go there. And absolutely. Just, just recently out. Speaking of the area. Uh, now, Brooklyn is, is around 2.7 million people and Chicago is around 2.8 million people. So now our own Brooklyn, our own Brooklyn is almost as big as Chicago. So this wow. area, uh, you know, everybody's talking about the exodus and people leaving, but um, our own little Brooklyn is uh, the same size as Chicago and that's not even counting anything else. So, um, and then as you mentioned, you know, we've got Philadelphia, DC, you got New England, it's, it's it's pretty well, cool. that tri that whole tri-state area just gives gives yeah. everyone the ability to to share, right? As a uh, as, as one big area, yeah, um, that's great. So, I wanna I wanna thank Jason uh, for joining us today. I wanna thank our co-hosts. Uh, I wanna thank all thank. Our of sponsors <laughs> and companies uh, once again. Boat Hotline, Miami's premier yacht and boat rental platform. Keller Williams, contact Joanne Policalvo at Keller Williams, Miami. And if it's not Florida, I can get you a home anywhere in the U.S. and Canada. Pioneer Financial, contact Jojo P Pastors, pioneerfinancial.nm.com. And go to the comments section, guys, and check out our social media for any of our, uh, to follow us and to follow Jason and to get uh, details on all of the stuff we mentioned here today. And uh, I'm going to leave it out to Krista. Oh, well, that's it for us today, guys. Thank you so much for joining us. Be sure to catch us next time with Jen and Ariane at the Wine 10 Confessions. Jen Kale Gum, international makeup artist, educator, advocate for women who better to teach us all about makeup and founder of Sam and Maddie Makeup and creator of Flush Yoga Glow. And not to be excluded, Ariane Gold, CEO and founder of Gold Number no. 8, creator of Fine Luxury Goods. But Big thanks to Jason. Thank you for joining us this afternoon. Absolutely. And pleasure. Thank you. Thanks for everyone. Thanks for a lot, Jason. We will Thank see you so you much. Soon. And if you come to Miami, let me know. Absolutely. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Bye-bye.